welcome to Friday Night Live. I'm Pastor Daryl, and I'm joined by Lady Tammy. Good, good evening, good evening, good evening to everyone. Welcome to Winning in Prayer Friday Night Live. I was going to call it something else, Friday so Night I had Live. to think about no, what I'm talking no, about. No. We've been doing so much Friday. these last couple of weeks, so I needed to make sure that I said Friday Night Live because that's what it is. It's Friday Night Live. So guess what? I want everybody to pick up their phones, pick up your device. We're on right now on all our social media platforms, YouTube. We're on Whip TV, on Roku. We're on Whip TV, Facebook. We are on, on, on. So everybody pick up your phone and your devices or your laptop, whatever you're watching us on, and share tonight. We are going to finish up our series on regrouping, um, and we're going to regroup regroup from weariness on tonight i'm sure we have something special between the both of us we never talk about what we're going to talk about on friday night live right. so um and we usually like flow together or we bring out some really good points so please make sure that you're letting everybody know that friday night live is on we are on so announcements are as thus for this week, we don't have a revival this week. We don't have anything like that, but we are on Wednesday night, um, second Wednesday of the month. It is Prophet Prophetess Debbie Godwin's um, Wednesday, Winning Wednesday Bible study with her at 8 p.m. She is excited to be on with the Whip family. So make sure that you are here for Bible study on Wednesday, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. We have a partner, a new partner, which is Prophetess Debbie, and then it's all and then it's two all three of us, the regulars, you know, the norms that you guys see. That's what's on. So and then Friday night live, of course, at 9 p.m. We are on talking about subjects that you may not have heard about talking about subjects that's going to get you through the month, through the week, those kind of things. So meet us here at um, on Friday Night Live. And then our six-hour prayer event is on May 14th, which is next Saturday. May 14th, mm. next Saturday, we have um, six the six-hour prayer event next Saturday. We are on from 4 p.m., to 10 p.m. Clear you your, tell them who, who else involved. Clear your, uh, just in case they haven't seen the fly. Yes, just in case you haven't seen it. So clear your calendar. That's what I was going to say. So who's on next week? It is myself. It is Minister Ida Carson. It is Prophetess Chanel Smith. It is Minister Jennifer Smith. It is going to be, um, I have one more person. I got to go back to the flyer. Who am I missing? I think that's it. Hold on. Minister Jennifer Smith, it, it will be her first time being on Winning in Prayer. Prophet Chanel, too. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm getting to yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> I, I am thoroughly looking forward to it. Um, Minister Jennifer Smith is a songbird as well. I, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss next Saturday. Saturday. Uh, and oh, Prophet. Lady, oh, Lady Tanya Barnes. Um, Prophet is Chanel Smith. Yeah. She Prophet is out of Virginia. Virginia, yeah. yes. So we have myself, Minister Jennifer Smith, Lady Tanya Barnes, Prophetess Chanel Smith, and Minister Ida Carson. So you don't want to miss this event. It is the Mighty Women of God praying, teaching, and praying. We're going to be praying for teaching and praying for six hours. So don't miss it next week, four p.m. to ten p.m. next Saturday, May fourteenth. The flyer is on with. And also, Momentum Church, if you are interested in becoming a member of a church that is online, Momentum Church is welcoming, welcoming everybody home. So go to MomentumChurchOLC um, at gmail.com and you can get, um, you can email us and we will email you back. We also offer prayer Monday through Friday. 10 p 10 a.m to 12 p.m mm -hmm. if you are needing prayer the phone number the flyer is on the um is on whip on the winning in prayer page so if you are wanting prayer mm -hmm. we are offering prayer on um monday through friday 10 a.m to 12 p.m the phone number is 941-782-8322 Two, two. I need to get that out there because I didn't know if we mentioned it. So I have to make sure I look at it. So 941-782-8322. We are offering prayer Monday through Friday, 
10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Make sure you call us. Share that with someone that is needing prayer at the moment. And we and will I'm pray excited, with them. I'm excited about Momentum Church. Church is a new mobile website. Yes. That is, it's it's up and running. And I'll be doing a video to get, let you guys know a lot more about that. You'll be able to text us. We'll be able to text you mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so we got some exciting things going on for all of our um, the ministries that we are involved in. So don't forget with TV on Roku. If you want to see something, see Christian broadcasting for 24 hours, it is there. Mm -hmm. You have a Roku, download the Winning in Prayer app, and you can watch us. You can watch many speakers on programming on 24 hours a day if you know somebody that's interested in with tv coming on teaching preaching uh fitness cooking talk show we have music. the number one fitness show yes. online with um Laka burley yes. she comes on every sunday at 4 p.m and she does a wonderful job exactly we also have the number one talk show on Roku at uh Wednesday uh at, that's uh, oh, oh, oh gotcha. Wednesday, every Wednesday 4 p.m. I got this. No. Every Wednesday at 4 uh, uh no every Wednesday at 3 p.m. You got me all twisted. No, okay. Um uh, the Hope Show with mm. Tan Tate and the cast. So yes. uh if you're looking for some quality uh should I say entertainment? Uh, yeah, yeah, I Part guess so. if, if if you're looking teaching, for some quality uh, yeah. teaching uh, and sound, just sound teaching, you can find it on Whip TV, bro. Yes, so come and join us. Go look at it um, and see and tell us how what you think too. Yeah. So email us at winningandprayer at gmail dot com for all your prayer request needs. If you have questions, if you want to know something about Whip. Just email us, or you can call us at the phone number that I just um, 941 782 8322. Thank you, because I can't remember it. So, I thank you for being here on tonight. We are going to go on and talk about regroup from weariness. Regrouping from weariness. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what weariness is. Weariness is being exhausted in strength, endurance, or freshness, it's having one's patience, tolerance or pleasure exhausted that's what weariness is what's your definition of weariness? i have extreme tiredness fatigue reluctance to see or experience any any more of something okay well let's put some scripture to this okay uh galatians 6 9 galatians 6 9 says and let us not be weary and well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not uh, Paul, who had been through many things, tells the churches of Galatia, uh, who were at the time dealing with Judaizers, uh, to not be weary. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this was a, a young church. Uh, they, <laughs> this was a young church uh, who were really trying to get uh, their feet up under them. Uh, Paul had been ministered to him, but at the same time, uh, we had these these men called Judaizers who were people who wanted to mix the law with faith. Mm -hmm. Paul was trying to move them into a place of faith, mm -hmm. uh, letting them know that you don't have to work for this thing. It's given freely. Mm -hmm. So Paul tells the, the, uh, the Galatian church uh, that don't be weary and well doing and well and well doing. Because you have to know that there's going to come a point. A everybody's due. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a due season, mm -hmm. but you will never get that due season if you faint. And so Paul was encouraging them: Don't faint. Mm -hmm. Your time is coming. Mm -hmm. And I can identify with, with, with yes. feeling like when when's my time going to come back around? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everybody does. And everybody, everybody uh, uh, feel like they, they, you know, they want to give up. But I'm telling you, if you can just stick in there mm -hmm. and we're being pulled and tried on, on so many sides in this season. But if you can, if you can stay in there and stay encouraged and keep your eyes fixed on God, everybody has a due season. Right. So Paul in the New Testament was speaking to the New Testament saints. Well, Isaiah in Isaiah 50 and 4, he was speaking to. 
the Israelites. He was speaking to them because they, even though at the time they were doing what they wanted to do, they had gotten weary and tired and waiting for the Lord to uh, deliver them out of captivity and mm -hmm. under persecution. So he, um, in 54, in Isaiah 50 and four, it says, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned mm -hmm. that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He was saying, I, God, God uh, gave me a tongue to how to relate. Yeah. I can relate to those that are weary, those that are having issues, those, those that feel troubled, those that feel like God has forgotten about mm -hmm. them. He said, God has given me the tongue too. So that means he gave me the understanding how to relate to them so that I could help them in their weary time. You know, you know, it's it's so important to know what to say to someone yes. that's weary, mm -hmm. but it's so much more important that you know how to talk to yourself. Yes. During your times of worry. Yes. Yes. What you say to yourself, mm -hmm. it can make or break uh, your ability to stand and continue going. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, David said, "I encourage myself. You better, you better, mm -hmm. you better have enough word on the inside to be able to encourage yourself when no one else is around mm -hmm. in the midnight hour when you don't think you're gonna make it through. Yes, you better have enough word in you that you can stir it up. Yes, and can and help yourself continue to stand. Yes." Because let me tell you, it's it's not always. Listen, it's not always uh, 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 balloons and streamers. This thing, <laughs> this thing can be a, <laughs> this thing can be a fight sometimes. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, what are you going to do in the midnight hour when there's no one around to to cheer you on? Mm -hmm. You better have a prayer life that can outlast the difficulty that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You better have enough word in you that can help get you through that midnight hour. That's going to help you to stand. That's going to help you to know that God has not forsaken God, you. you. Everybody Lord. else may, may, may turn their back on you, thank but you, you have to know, you have to have it settled in your heart and mind. Yes. And no matter how, how bad it looks, no matter how hard it gets, you yes. have to know that God is still there when it looks as if the bottom of life has fallen out. Right. And so we as leaders and we as people of God should be ready to mm -hmm. speak to people's weariness. Yes. We should be able to say, you know, yes, I was once there. Yes, I. this is what I did. Mm -hmm. So just like Isaiah said, the Lord gave him a tongue. He gave oh, him how to God. relate to those that are in the weary state at this point. It does get tired when you don't mm -hmm. see something happening. Hallelujah. It does wear on your mind. It wears on you mentally mm -hmm. and physically when you don't see things happening like you think they should. But I want to tell you and encourage you that God is working behind the scenes. Yes. He's not going to just leave you out there tired. He's mm -hmm. not going to just leave you out there feeling alone. You know, but you, you know, lady, we have to be able to relate. You know, lady, tell me here in the last two years, Thank you know, you, this pandemic self-care has become oh so so popular yes and you know what you were saying about us uh being able to speak to someone during the time we're geared we're geared towards that we're built for that yeah because when you're <laughs> when you're in ministry that's what you're that's what yeah. you're built for to serve and to give yeah. and to speak to, to and to help see through mm -hmm. we're, we're 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 built for that mm -hmm. but what i don't think we excel in is our self-care even spiritually yes do you have what it takes? Can you speak to yourself during your time of difficulty? Mm. Or do you have to depend on the prayer of someone else? My do you goodness. have to depend on the hoorah of someone else to get you through your time of difficulty? Mm. Listen, I want you to understand that uh, uh, we have to be able to uh, self-care, do mm. self-care for ourselves. Because we're not going to always have someone around. Right. Right. There's not going to always be that listening ear. Right. And I can tell you sometimes, husband and wife, sometimes, you know, it, it may not, she may not be, you better have yeah, it on the inside. <laughs> exactly. You better have something on the inside. Yes. That's going to push you forward when you feel like staying at home, yes. when you feel like giving up, when you don't feel like studying. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you don't when you don't feel like going to the church? What mm -hmm. do you do when you don't feel like it? Mm -hmm. 
You better have enough word on the inside, enough word that that can say, get up off your behind and get it in gear. Amen. Amen. Get Amen. yourself from under the cover, out of the bed, and get up and get your day started. Yes. Yes. You better, you better, you better have some self care ability on the inside, and the Holy Ghost does give us that. Yes. So the rest of that scripture says, "He awakes me morning by morning. Morning awakes, by morning, awakens my ear to hear as they learn. So you have to be able to listen. Yeah, you have to be That's able good. to That's know good. when someone is encouraging you to keep moving. You have to move yourself mm -hmm. out of the way and listen. Yeah, and listen to the one that has come to you to tell you. Well, it may not always be what thus saith the Lord. It might be something that they have common sense and they're saying this is what you need to do to get up. David on several times on several occasions had to get up. Yeah. He didn't have anybody yeah. to yeah. say, yeah. oh honey baby it's okay. It's alright sweetheart. Well baby, he didn't have that. He had to get in the face of God and allow mm -hmm. God to heal him, bring him out, deliver him, because he was certainly tired. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine running from someone 10 years trying to keep trying to stay alive. He was he was trying to stay alive. Even though My the Lord God. had his back, he spent 10 years on the one run. And you're talking about weariness. You're talking about you can't wait six months for God to bring you something. Mm -hmm. You can't wait three months for God to do something for you. What about 10 years? And what about, and we, over. and we feel like we're going to stop. We're going to, you know, pull back. We become inconsistent mm -hmm. in our prayer life. We become in inconsistent with the ones that have pushed us forward. We become in inconsistent with God. So we, we faint, we forget mm -hmm. and we step back. But imagine if it was you for 10 years if you've been in a trial for 10 years you know what i'm talking about and there are some people that have been in trials for 10 years you, you know you know I, I know you know but uh i prayed for something for 10 years mm -hmm. and then it began to happen and the lord reminded me do you remember how long you've been praying for this mm. uh so much so that i had forgotten that i had been praying for it but when it began to happen i was like wow you know the Lord is really doing this thing. Mm -hmm. Do you not know that as the Lord began to uh, 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 allow some things to begin to happen after 10 years, do you not know that the devil came back and, and started trying to get back in that same situation mm -hmm. to make it appear that he really didn't do it? Mm -hmm. See, when oh you, God. when you, when you, when you're saying that you're saved, mm -hmm. some things may not happen overnight. And God may deliver, but it doesn't mean that the enemy is not going to come back around and try to try that thing again. Right. When, 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 when Christ made, uh, when Christ decided that he was going to go and fulfill his purpose, the moment he did that, it said Judas came, came, came to me. Mm. So don't think just because you say yes, that there's never going to ever be yeah. a, a trying of that. Yes. Right. And this is where, pe why people get so weary is because their yes is tried. Mm. Don't don't ever think that a yes means smooth selling. Mm. A yes is just a, a yes is a yes, but it, a yes will never be a yes unless it's tested, My unless goodness. it's tried. My Your yes is always going to be tried. Yes. My yes will always be tried. My goodness. But when you get worry in that yes, what do you do? Right. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? I'm going to do like David, encourage myself. That's only because I've learned that, though. Well, that's not something that um, was taught to me. That, yeah. But I had to learn that I can't I can't give up because I don't get my way at that moment. And at that time, so true. So I have true. to I had to learn that it's just like having a child. You know, you teach a child. You can't have everything when you go in the store. Right. We're not buying everything in the store. But when you get when you get to the checkout, that child has something in the basket mm -hmm. that you didn't put in the basket. So you're saying, nope, we're not getting that. You're being disobedient. So at the time I had to learn how to encourage myself just as David, because a lot of times my husband wouldn't know that I was um, going through 
uh, spiritually or feeling down spiritually. So you have to, Pastor talked about self-care. Mm-hmm. I had to learn self-care. It's a learned behavior. It's something that um, some people just don't have. It's not innate nature mm-hmm. for some people. For me, I was the type of my, and my husband will tell you that I was a type of, well, that fire is burning over there. There's nothing I can do about that fire. So I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep going over. I'm going to keep passing it over. But eventually that fire is going to catch up to me. Mm -hmm. So then that's when the weariness comes in and came in for me. So you have to be able to recognize the roots of your weariness. You have to listen for um, for God and for people that are around you. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to uh, pull up what they say. Pull yourself up by your own boots, bootstraps. bootstraps yeah. yeah, that's what, and that's what David had to do on many occasions. Yeah. Running in mountains and caves and fields, and you know he's going on people's property and asking them to, "Can you hide me for a minute?" And they're telling him no, so he's got to keep running down the road. So there is some things that you're going to have to learn in this walk that you're going to have to pull yourself up, and you're going to have to realize it's not going to always be easy, and it's not going to always be yes, not mm. always. Not always. So I'm, I'm done with that. Oh, okay. Just like that? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know. <laughs> you okay. okay. I mean, I have another scripture. No, no, no. I, I, no I, have, I have one. I'm going, to go, I'm going over to Isaiah, the 40th chapter, mm-hmm. uh, the 28th verse. And it reads, Isaiah 40, 28. It says, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not Mm -hmm. neither is weary there's no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength Mm -hmm. even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as Mm -hmm. eagles they shall run and not be weary and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint they shall walk and not faint mm-hmm. uh, cons- we 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 have to understand that we have to be dependent upon god mm. our strength is limited yes uh so we have to have a dependence upon god it says that he fainteth not god though the all those abilities that god have we received them the moment we came here it says he fainteth not mm-hmm. he is not where he's not where it, it says he giveth power to those who are faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth their strength. Mm-hmm. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, right. and the young men shall. But you have to be able to wait on the Lord. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. can't allow situations and circumstances to them to dictate to you that it's over. Yes. That is over. Do you have the ability to wait? I remember a couple of years ago when I was at work, God told me that we don't we don't wait well Mm -hmm. and that we give up far too soon. My goodness. How many times if you look back over your life, how many times do you think you've given up too soon on on things? Mm -hmm. I know that I have naturally and spiritually. I know that I have. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I I from from I don't want to give up because you know what? Tomorrow might be the day. Right. <laughs> Tomorrow might be the when we were going through our difficult time in prayer, and it lasted for a few years. What drove me is that I always thought tomorrow might be the day. Mm, thank you, Lord. Tomorrow might be the day, that's and right. I don't want to give up to miss. Tomorrow is the day. That's, that's faith. Tomorrow is the day, and I, I I didn't I didn't have no tingling going down my back. Right. I, I didn't I can't tell you that I felt the Lord, yes. but I knew that I had given up prior, mm-hmm. and I did not want to be guilty of that again. So I always reminded myself, no matter how bad I felt, no matter how Thank discouraged I was, that tomorrow might be the day. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It finally came that tomorrow was the well, day. Tomorrow was the day. Amen. <laughs> Glory Amen. to God. Amen. So you gotta have the you gotta have some stickability. Yeah. Oh, that's a good word. 
you got to have some stickability. When it looks like it's not going to work out, when it looks like it's over, when the devil is telling you it's over, you better have some stickability. Stickability. We made up another word. Yeah. Discipler and stickability. stickability. So you heard it right here on Winning in Prayer. So the stickability of, of your walk should be you have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So consistency is... I know what it looks like. I know what it sounds like. I can see my, it, my, but my. I can't touch it. Yeah. But I, I can, I can smell it, but I can't eat it. Mm -hmm. Those are the stickability. I know they're there. I know it's there. My faith, and that's faith. Stickability is faith. Mm -hmm. We just put another word to it, another spin to it. Yeah. But it's faith, and faith is what keeps you sticking in there. My, faith my, my. is what keeps you going. Faith is what, and you may not think you even have faith because you're like, okay, I'm doubting at the same time, but you're sticking in there. You're staying in there. Mm. So then you start building, you start building on that and things start happening and you start seeing God move because you know, it's God. It's not us. It's not anybody, anything, any, anything anybody could do, but him, he moves. I had a problem with being inconsistent when things didn't go my way. So then I will pull back. But what about if I, it, I mean, why did I pull back? Because me wanted it done then. Me wanted it done right away. Right. Me wanted to see it, wanted to touch it, wanted to feel it right then. So my stickability was inconsistent. So my faith was inconsistent and seeing God was inconsistent because I was inconsistent. Right. Not him. He's not inconsistent. I was inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So your weariness comes from not sticking to it, stickability, from being um, inconsistent mm -hmm. and feeling like you've got to have it right away and not, not pulling yourself up when things don't go your way. Right. You have to know that God is there and that's your stickability. You've seen him do things for you in the past. Go back and grab those. I always think about that. Reference, of, reference back yesterday mm -hmm. reference back two years ago reference back six months ago reference back and you will stay that weariness will go away because you know he did it then mm -hmm. you know you know in in the 28th verse of of isaiah it says that 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 word fainteth says that he fainteth not um we faint a lot of and and i'm not talking about naturally fainting but we faint spiritually. Mm -hmm. That word faint means to lose perception or to lose clarity. When we have, are praying and we have something before God, if, they, if he takes us into overtime, mm -hmm. a lot of times we begin to lose perception yes. and the clarity of what we're praying for and Thank weariness you. sets in and we give up on what we've been praying for. Well, I want to challenge you on tonight. Listen, it says that our God, uh, uh, he's not weary and he fainteth not. I want to challenge you. Yes. If you have some things before God on tonight, and maybe it's been a little while, maybe it's six months, maybe it's eight months, nine months, maybe My it's God. been a year. But I want to challenge you mm -hmm. at just the, the importance of that prayer when you begin to place it before God, uh, the excitement that you had when you begin to place it before God. I want you to go back to that place. Right. Don't that. lose, yes. don't lose perception. You, God. Don't lose the clarity of that mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. Don't lose the importance How of that prayer. Well, don't lose the excitement of that Thank prayer you, don't let a little time cause you to give up on that prayer Thank and you, throw Lord. that prayer you know what we, we are so guilty of just throwing prayers away because they don't happen overnight listen some of the best victories you will ever get in life are the ones that you have you have paid sweat equity you have yes. you have prayed you have you have cried over over that prayer you have been disgusted and then you went back and prayed the mm. best victory is when you have Hallelujah. really labored in prayer and to see god do it listen Yes. Nothing else excites me more than, than for God to answer one of my prayers. Correct, correct. And I all the people the in the thing. all the people in the world, He answers my prayer. Yes, man, get yes. out of here. Yeah, exactly, 
Exactly. I was looking, Ooh. I was actually looking at my journals the other day while I was sitting at the table mm-hmm. studying. And I looked back at some of the prayers that I had written, mm-hmm. even for people. Mm-hmm. And I saw, mm-hmm. and I went back and I said, Lord, you my answered God. it for them. Yeah. You answered it for yeah. them. You answered it for us. You answered it. So God, I thank you. And that's what I mean. Referencing back mm-hmm. what he has done for you. Because if you reference back, it encourages you. It keeps you going. Thank you for joining us, Jennifer Reddy and uh, Tanya Hunter. Thank you for being on tonight and Clarissa so you have to know when you are having a hard time go back and reference yeah, go yeah. back in your memory and re- and say you know what he did answer so mm-hmm. he's not going to leave me out here I'm going to read Psalm 6 8 through 9 oh no I'm sorry Psalm 6 and 6 it says I'm weary with my groaning all night and make my bed swim that means he was crying mm-hmm. all night he was in distress this is David I want you to make sure that everyone knows this is Psalm of David. It is Psalm 6, 6 and 6. It says, I'm weary with groaning all night. I make my bed swim. That means he was doing some crying. Mm-hmm. And how many know How many know and felt and been in that place before where you've cried, where the pillow is wet, where you're, your face is swollen, your eyes are swollen, and you need a Benadryl the next day? That's what he was doing. It says, I drenched my couch with my tears. So not only was his bed, wherever he went, wherever he was laying, it was soaking wet. My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows old because of my enemies. That's because his eyes were swollen. And then it grows old uh, of of all my enemies, not just people, but the distractions that were going on. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard my voice and oh, I'm sorry, and has heard the voice of my weeping. Mm-hmm. So the Lord heard him at that moment. Mm-hmm. So I know in the midst of you snotting and crying, eyes swollen, not really sure what to do, what to say. He just sat and cried. He said his bed is he's swimming in his tears. His couch is wet. Mm-hmm. But he's saying, you know what? I got something for everyone that wants to talk about me, that wants to persecute me, that wants to down me. I got something for you. The Lord heard me. Mm-hmm. The Lord heard me in my weariness and tiredness. Mm -hmm. He heard me. So David, even when in his midst of his crying, he knew that God in he knew that God was going to deliver him. He knew that God was there for him and he lifted him up and he was healed at that moment. Mm -hmm. So we have to know the same thing. All that crying is snotting. Yes, it's good. They say crying is good for the soul. I'm a crier. So I'll cry sometime. I'll uh, get emotional about some things. So I know that it's good. I've wet a pillow before. So Mm. if (laughs) my eyes have been swollen before, but I knew that God was going to be, um, was going to allow me to have the victory. Mm -hmm. And that's the stick, which call it stickability. Stickability that we have to have is that God is going to see the referencing and the stickability is what we have to have. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, I'm going to give you a scripture from Hebrews 12 that I believe is key in dealing with weariness. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, mm. despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that can endure such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Let me give you the two keys in this scripture here. It says in verse two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Mm. Listen, when, when, when tests and trials and trouble and life happens, you better keep your mind on Jesus and what he went through and know that if he made it, I also can make it. The other part of this this scripture is in verse three. It says, for consider him, consider him, Mm. consider all that he went through. Yes. Yet he did not give up. Mm. Consider him being spit on, being slapped, all that he went through. While he was going through, he had you in mind. Yes. So a little weariness pales in comparison Mm -hmm. if we consider him when we're going through. Mm. 
I I have to learn to take the spotlight off of me my and learn God. to consider what my Savior went through. Yeah. And God. while he was going through, he had me in mind. He, did it for me. he had me, had me in mind. Thank he God. knew that there was going to be a time that I would need strength. Then that if he did not give his life, I wouldn't have that strength. I was going to be, it was going to be a time when I would need to be encouraged. Mm. It was going to be a time Hallelujah. when I was going to need Thank to be you. brought through. And he had me on his mind when he was going through. So listen, if we can consider him when we're going through, if we can consider him when we want to give up, if we can consider him when we want to walk away, if we can consider him when we start talking rashly and acting rashly and doing things because we're in pain, if we can consider him, how does it make him feel when I want to give up and he's been nothing but good? How does it make him feel when I say I'm not going back? When all he did was for me, he had me in mind. If we can consider him. My gosh, that, that is a, I didn't even think of, think of that scripture, but that's, that's great because we need to realize that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for wow, us. Wow, we were sinners. He didn't just die, my, he was my, my. crucified for us. He hung on a cross. They spit on him. They beat him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They put stripes on his back. They broke his knees. They did everything they could do to destroy this man that had done nothing. So we, again, reflect back on what he's done for us and what he did in the word of God, what he mm. did and what he came for. He was born just to die. Mm -hmm. There's a song that says he was born just to die. And he knew his purpose. He only preached for three years. Mm -hmm. It was a short span. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had time in in this thing. We didn't have just three years. We got uh, apostles got over 30 years in preaching and teaching. So he had a short span of time to get the word out, to do his father's will. And he did all that my, my, for my. us. How dare we give up because he doesn't answer it tonight or he didn't answer it yesterday or he didn't he's not going to answer it. it's been seven months i prayed that or 10 years i prayed right, that right. how dare we give up on what he has done and that breaks weariness when we decide oh you know what i know what he did for me so and i know what he did for the world so since he did that for the world i know he's got my back mm -hmm. so i gotta come out of this thing i gotta bring myself to a point where i realize that he did all of that for me and that's where your faith comes from that's where your stickability comes from because you realize he did it for you so how do you come out of your wilderness uh, i'm sorry out of your weariness is believing and knowing what God has done, the scripture that uh, Apostle read. Um, and then naturally so, there are some things that you can do naturally. Mm -hmm. Change your atmosphere. Change around, you know, we do spring cleaning um, during the springtime. Right. Spring clean your house. Clean some things out. Take some clothes out. Take some shoes out. You know, clean up the little knickknacks and dust and do all kind of things. That helps you break <laughs> the weariness and what you're feeling like. I, You know what? He's not here. He's not here. I guarantee mm -hmm. you start cleaning and turn on some gospel music. Your whole atmosphere will change. Your whole mindset will change. But we got to reflect. We got to remember what he did for mm -hmm. us. We have to remember that. Thank you for joining us, Pastor Victor, all the way in um, Africa. Glad to see you on tonight. Thank you, Lord. Good. I'm done. I'm done with that. You're done? I'm done with it. Okay. It's your oh, turn. Okay. So let me give you my next scripture. My next scripture is coming from Psalms uh, 55, if I can get there. Psalms 55 mm -hmm. and 22. And then I have an, another New Testament verse as well. Psalm 55 and 22, it says, cast thy burden upon the Lord mm -hmm. and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Yes. Cast your burden upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. The difference in. The difference is when we try to carry a burden mm -hmm. at some point, we're always going to become weary. Yes. That's why he tells cast your cast burden your on burden. the Lord. Yes. We're not supposed to be carrying it. He wants us to be weight free, worry free. Mm. So can we, we're the cat literally throw it, throw our care on the Lord. Yes. Yeah, so just like you throw a fishing rod when you're fishing, you throw cast it on it. him. So you he's throw big it enough, at him. He's big enough to handle yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. He's what big you, enough to handle it. Go ahead. Oh, 
Oh, okay. So I'm going to do Psalms 23 and 4. I know we talk about the Lord is the shepherd and all that, mm -hmm. but I want to go to um, uh, 23 and 4 and read that. And then we're going to talk about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It says, he who has, I'm sorry, I'm at the wrong scripture. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That means he's got my back. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. I fear no evil because I'm walking in the shadow of death. I'm so tired. I'm so exhausted of what's going on around me in my house, in the world. I'm tired, but I know I'm walking in the shadow of death. I'm walk weirdness makes you feel like you're dying because you're so exhausted, but you're not dying and he's there with you. And then you're riding your staff. So we always speak about the Lord as being our shepherd. Mm -hmm. So what does a shepherd unnaturally, what does a shepherd do with the rod and staff? He guides his sheep, he protects, he protects them. So, and he um, disciplines them at the same time, mm -hmm. but they always look for the rod because it's st the staff is always standing. And so they go and find him when they get lost and, you know, kind of like far away from him, they look up to see where the staff is. So when they see the staff, they know that's where they should be going. And that's what we should be doing when we get weary. We should be looking up to the Lord and say, hey, I'm tired, I'm in trouble, but I know you are here. I see you, mm -hmm. I hear you, I feel you, and you've been there for me reflecting again. So look for that staff, look for the rod, look for the safety and comfort in him, not in people because everybody doesn't have the answer for right. you. Right. Everybody can't give you an answer how you feel. Everybody can't give you an answer on what you should do. Some people might give you the wrong answer. You know, they might tell you to go do something you're not supposed to do. So you need to be looking up to the Lord and asking, looking for him in every situation, no matter if it's bad, good, indifferent, look for him just as the sheep look for their shepherd. Naturally, that's who we should be looking for. That's how you come out of your weariness. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Okay, my, my 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 next scripture is, is uh, the New Testament. It's from First Peter five and seven. Uh, it says, "Casting Thank all you your Lord. care upon Him, because He careth for you." Yes, uh, that care careth E T H. Uh, it's ongoing. Cast your care upon Him, because He careth mm -hmm. for you. E T H meaning you have ongoing around the clock care. Yes, if you cast mm -hmm. your care on Him. Thank you, Lord. So around the clock means all the time. All the time. So if you wake up at 3 o'clock, it needs to call on him. He's there. He's if you there. wake up at 1 o'clock, he's, he's there. If you wake up at 12 p.m., he's there. If you wake up at 6 a.m., he he's is there. there. He's David there. said he cried almost uh, basically all night in one scripture. Mm -hmm. I cried all night, and he was still there, and he still heard me. Uh, Pastor preached about he inclines his ear. He leans down to listen to your cry. He feels your weariness. Mm -hmm. He will see send help if you ask for help now if you're not going to be transparent and you want to just waddle in your weariness then he's not going to send the help he's going to let you sit right there in it and he's going to let you uh, decide you know hey well maybe i should look up maybe i should find him maybe i should ask him for help so we got to be prepared as people of god to look for him self-care trust him stickability reference him there's so many things that i hope that you guys are writing down on tonight yeah. because just in case you get weary just in case you are weary on tonight that you're writing down what brings you out of weariness and naturally like i said clean your house dust go for a drive you know uh go sit and get some coffee somewhere and watch other people there's a whole lot of things you can do people watch. To, yeah people watch you can uplift yourself if you don't have it at home if you feel like you can't do it at the house then get in your car and go go for a walk in the neighborhood there's a whole lot of things that you can do to um get out of that pattern because some people get in patterns mm -hmm. and when you get in patterns Patterns will wear you out too. Right. Patterns will make you feel like there's no help and no hope. So you have to be able to, um, again, um, use the Lord, reflect the reflect back and see what he's done for you and pull yourself up out of that. Amen. Amen. Oh, my, my next scripture is Psalm 73. You're going to like this. Okay. Like this. Psalm, Psalm 73, it reads, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart and this is a psalm of asaph mm -hmm. it says but as for me my feet were almost gone my steps had well nigh slipped mm -hmm. for i was envious at 
the at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Mm -hmm. So listen, sometimes we get weary because we're looking at the wrong thing. Yes. Because we feel like our unsaved friends, our unsaved family Ooh. members, they're 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 uh, uh, prospering mm. a lot more than we are at mm. a faster rate than we are. My they God. got a house and don't go to church at all. Mm. They got a brand new car and haven't stepped foot in the church. Mm. But I'm tithing. I'm worshiping. I'm praying, mm -hmm. I'm fasting, mm -hmm. I'm giving, I'm sacrificing, uh, I'm single, and yet I'm saved. Uh, I'm doing everything that I know to do, yet these people that ain't, ain't don't even look past the church when they drive past it <laughs> are, are prospering and living better than me. And sometimes we look at that, mm -hmm. and it causes us to say, God, wh 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 when, when, yes. when? Yes. When is my time coming around? Listen, I know you've been guilty of it. I've been guilty of it yes, myself. My been God. guilty of my, and it only causes you to become weary mm -hmm. because you then begin to question God. Like I'm, I'm doing all this. Mm -hmm. Where, where, where's my I time coming? Right. Where's my time? And you, and you only when you do that, you end up in a place of self weariness. Weariness, yes. Weariness, yes. Self-induced. His his eyes was in the wrong place. He's looking at the wrong thing. He said, "My feet are well now. I, I was I was I gone, gone. <laughs> because I'm looking at something mm -hmm. that I should not be looking at." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you been guilty of that? I can raise yes. my hand and say that I have. Yes. Nah. What nah. you say? Self-induced weariness. Self-induced yeah. weariness. When you start looking at what people have and you don't have it, yeah, I mean because you 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 see, and they they don't go to church. Like I'm saying they don't even they don't look, they, they don't look jobs, at the, they don't look at the church when they drive past the church, and 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 you know you living right, mm -hmm. you tithing, mm -hmm. you doing everything, and you you saying God how why? And a lot of them are working seven days a week too. To keep and maintain what they have, we never know. Well, we're what's not. Happening. We yeah, we don't. We don't even be considering. Our, we just look at the fact that they have. <laughs> right, and I'm just saying we need to stop looking because we don't know how what they're doing to get that or to manage what they have. Mm -hmm. So I would rather for God to give it to me, and I don't have to worry about trying to manage it. Because True. when he gave it to me, he knew that I could manage it. Well, the so, Bible says that the blessing of the Lord add, add it, no, make it rich, but don't add, add no sorrow. No sorrow to it. So I don't want anything that I'm going to have sorrow behind. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to stop that self-induced weariness and that self-induced uh, feeling like God's not hearing me. All mm -hmm. the you know, panic and anxiety behind that, because if he gives it to me, he means he knows that I can mm -hmm. maintain it. And it's adding to me. It's not taking away from me. You know how you see people go buy cars and they don't they think they have the money to take care of that car. But when that car breaks down, mm -hmm. they don't have the money to take care of that car. And that car is just sitting. So that didn't add. Add, that didn't add to his riches or her riches that takes away from the riches so if god gives it to you that means he knows you know how to maintain it and yes jennifer i do the same thing i've done the same thing pump up the gospel music and praise music and it helps every time it encourages mm -hmm. you um to keep moving and to keep going so jeremiah 29 and 13 i'm going to read that this is one of my favorite scriptures uh 29 13 it says and you will seek me and find me mm -hmm. when you search for me with all mm -hmm. your heart so your heart has to be in it mm -hmm. you know how people fall in love and sometimes they fall in love too quick and their heart's not in it so they start doing being inconsistent in the relationship that's what happens to us and when our weariness kicks in when our weariness is there it makes our hearts um, not be in it, mm -hmm. in it uh, enough to stay, have the stickability, to have the faith, to abound in it. We don't want to abide. Our heart starts uh, moving in, and thinking of other things you could be doing with your Bible time, thinking of other things you could do with your fast time, thinking of other things you could do in prayer time, or you don't pray at all, or right. you pray 10 minutes and you get up, or you don't, you know, or I'll pray tomorrow, or I'll read my word tomorrow. So your heart becomes uh, weary and it makes you have inconsistency mm -hmm. so you got to do a heart check 
and a heart check is god where i know where i am right now right. you have to be transparent right. with it i know where i am right now but i need you to come and sit here and listen to me while i pour out myself to me david said he cried and he heard me he said get away from me i know you guys don't mean me any good and i know but the lord has heard me so mm -hmm. we have to know the same thing the lord has heard me. so seek him with all your heart your heart has to be in it in order for you to stop doing the self-induced uh weariness your heart has to be in it i'm done i gave my last oh you gave your last so i'm 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 so glad and thankful for this word because i've been in this stage before mm -hmm. and not to say that it's not going to come back not to say because you know with i'm just going to share a little bit about being pastors and leaders we get tired we get tired we get tired physically and we get tired um mentally um and we get tired spiritually, spiritually because we are we are the shepherds on earth and we are taking care where well, we're supposed to be anyway taking care of the flock not just taking care of ourselves right. taking from the flock we are to be serving and taking care of the flock and we get tired and so some people in the church don't think that we should but that they've never been in, in our places before. They've never been in situations where they have to take care of the flock and put my needs aside. So I want to encourage you as a leader, if you are feeling weary at this moment, there is a there is a tower. There is someone that you can run to. Mm -hmm. And it is God. It's the one that called you, not the person you want to text not the person's house you want to go over and complain about the saints too. It is God you need to go to because he is the one, he is the author and finisher of our faith. And that's who we need to go to. So don't stop preaching. Don't stop teaching because you're tired because it, it's going to pass. I've talked mm -hmm. about disparity. Disparity passes. Weariness will pass. As long as you're not self-inducing the weariness, it does pass. Hey Amen. Listen, I want to uh, challenge you guys on tonight that if, this ministry is making a difference or adding value to your life. Uh, I want to challenge you to give on tonight. The cash app is up on the screen. Yes. It's dollar sign winning in prayer. You know, I can remember back that first year that we were pastoring and someone, someone, someone made a comment and said, uh, uh, how did they say it? Uh, uh, that we didn't have any problems. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's when the problems actually started. <laughs> a lot of it started then when we started doing Ooh. the will of God. Woo wee! You talking about being uh, persecuted and Man. feeling like what is going on? Because as long as we weren't doing the will of God, we were good. But Man. when we started doing the will of God, Man, listen, oh, being a pastor does not God. make you exempt the from challenges. trouble. It does not make you exempt from challenges. Mm, the challenges. So I don't know. I don't know where that 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 uh, thought from hell came from, but <laughs> the challenges the, behind it. My God. The and you know, just not even being a pastor, just being a saved. I mean, just a person all kind that's of saved. You know, when financial you first, challenges and yes, all kind of other challenges. Because when you first get saved. You experience challenges. The enemy fights against you yeah. because he knows that he does no, he no longer can entertain you with what he has. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to throw things at you and, and you're like in a quandary, like, why is this happening now? Now, mm -hmm. this was happening before, you know, I was doing everything. I was great. I was, you know, being great at the time. But now that I've said yes to God, then it's like everything wants to fall apart. My finances want to fall apart. Everything is tested. And that, again, that can be part of your weariness. And weariness is something that you're going to have to know. You're going to have to notice it when you start feeling tired, when you start being inconsistent with your practice of reading your word and praying, that's when you know, okay, something's going on. I got to get in front of God. And the word says, shut the door and he'll be in that place with you. Yeah. So don't, we're not exempt. We're just not in a weariness place right I now. Mean, you know, we're not exempt. you know, to, you know, to be totally transparent, when we were, when we were first pastor, we were given more than 50% of our income. Yes. We, we were, yes. uh, uh, keeping the church afloat yes when we first started passing i think we, how many cars do we have four or five four. we have four or five cars and every last car before we were before we were passing they were good cars no problems the moment we started pastoring 
one car, the the one van. No, we had two cars. We had two cars and three vans. And uh, one of the vans, the transmission went out. And the other something. There was there was a there was a problem with every car. And, and, I, and I remember one week I had we had to, we and we didn't live far from the church. We had to get a ride to go around uh, to the church. Mm-hmm. And you want to ask me, tell me <laughs> that we don't have any, we didn't have any exactly. problems, exactly. but we didn't allow that to cause us to get weird. Yes, that's true. We stuck in there and one by one, you know, got got them fixed and and, uh, uh, and kept kept right on moving. Yes. You yes. can't allow things to happen and cause you to get weary and cause you to stay home. Mm-hmm. No. There has things. to be something that's bigger you. than your comfort. Yes. And everybody wants to love to go outside and get in their car and go. But if if your car, I mean, you, you go, you're just going to stay at home. You're going to tell the folk. If you're a pastor, you're going to tell the folk, I can't come to Sunday mm-hmm. because of my car. No. Yes. Exactly. You got to have something that's bigger than your comfort. And so I'm going to read 14. Well, part of 14a, it says, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Mm. I will bring you out of you. You seek me with your heart. I will bring you out of what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. So we got to, again, reflect Mm -hmm. on what he's done. We got to have some stickability and we got to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps at that moment because we know that God is able to do what the word says. His promises are true. Now, that when I was younger in my faith, did I think that it was always God? Sometimes I thought it was me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I thought that I was the one that was getting myself out of things and you know taking care of things, but it was not me. It was him. And now I can reflect on that and know that it was him. All right. We're over time. Father, we thank you for this time of being with your people on tonight. Father, we rebuke and bind the spirit of weariness, oh God. God. We speak to every listener's mind and their will and their heart, oh God. We speak of freshness, a new wind, oh God. God. uh, A new excitement about the things of God in in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for victory on tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Amen. Jennifer. Thank Amen. you very much. So Cash App, dollar sign, winning in prayer. Give your seed. I'm telling you, it is going to go to good use. So we thank you for being with us. And we'll see you on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Until next time, keep winning, winning in, in prayer. prayer. Thank you, Clarissa. Thank you. God bless you.